We just got to do it ourselves. And I'm okay with that. What we have here today is the power pole kit for the Yezu FT891. And this was sent in to us by Jason Wang. And Jason has these out on Thingiverse and some kits that he's got available. Here are a couple of different kinds of kits. This one's for the ICOM 7200. I don't have one of these yet. Now I need to get one. Thanks, Jason. This one is for the FT891 and so is this one. And you can see that there's a little bit different here. This one's already made. And this one is a do-it-yourself kit. So you can get this in a variety of ways. I'll leave some links in the description down below to help you get sorted and figure out which one that you want. So it looks like you have, let's open this up. In the do-it-all-yourself kit, some length of power cable, some pretty stout power cable there, 3D printed pieces, some power pole connectors, some crimp on terminals, spades for the power pole connectors, the screw to screw this thing together. So that's a complete kit to get the job done. I am gonna take advantage of the fact that this one here is already built. I have so much stuff to do that sometimes it's nice to get things that are a little farther ahead. So we have a nut embedded in the 3D printed case, and then we have the part that shows up on the outside of the radio, and then the power poles, and then the screw to screw it all together. So let's get this stuff off to the side and let's open up our radio. I think you only need to take the bottom plate off. You can see my, my 891 sticker is coming loose here. So I had to tape that down. I'm gonna start out with some number two Phillips. Nope, too big. Number one Phillips, there we go. Is that enough? That is not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna need to take the side rails off now. Now underneath the side rails are two more screws. And these are the same screws on the bottom so you can't mix them up. Okay, there we go. That's all it takes to get the case off. Four screws on each side, four screws on the bottom. One of the things I like about this iFixit toolkit is this top tray has this little section that's all honeycombed out so you can put your screws in. I don't know if they did that on purpose or if they did it for strength, but that's what I use it for and I like that. We have our power connection here. These are actually JIS screws, not Phillips screws. You can tell because there's a little dot dimpled into the case. So I'll use my JIS screwdriver bit to get these undone. Keep track of where your black and where your red is. I'm gonna sit this down like this on the workbench so that I can see red and black and know what's going on there. So they're not gonna move. Now, how do we get this piece out? Okay, it's gotta go that way, which means I need to squeeze these side pieces in in order to move it. So on the side, this piece here is keeping it from going out of the case, and this piece here is keeping it from going into the case. So that's all you needed to do was squeeze those out of the way. Now we need to take a look at our 3D printed pieces and see how these are gonna work. And you can already see that there's kind of a, a well shape in there. So I'm gonna put that in like that and take a look. That looks pretty good. And if I put it in upside down, it clearly doesn't fit. It sticks proud of the case. So we'll put it in right side up. So the flat side towards the top, and that takes care of that. And then that also lines up our screw hole. All right, so I did a little bit more investigation. There is a notch piece here that I wanna put in place. And you heard it snap into place and it looks nice and flat. Let's take a look overall. So you can see the two notches that are on the power pole connector shroud stick through the back of the FT891 case. There's another trick that you have to do, and that is these little grooves in the side need to go inside and stick out. So you gotta wiggle that in place, and you can see that part right there. So you can also see that that protrudes through on the front side. Well, I guess on the back side in this view. I'm gonna put that on, I'm gonna put that through. There we go. Okay, so there is what it looks like when it's all the way through properly. You've got the notch on the side. You've got everything lined up. This piece here is nice and flush, black on the VFO knob side. It even has black and red written on the circuit board so you can't mess that up. And we are good to go to put our outside plate on. Let's put the outside plate on. That just slides right over top and screws right in place. All right, now we need to switch back over to our JIS screws and screw down our power lugs. And there we go. Pretty slick.
It's almost like it was meant to be that way in the first place. I love it. And before we put our case back on, let's make sure we did this right. Okay, so I've got out my multimeter, my probes plugged into the appropriate ports on the multimeter. I'm gonna switch this over to continuity on manual mode because it's a little bit faster to react that way. And that tests out okay. So I wanna make sure I don't have any of my wires crossed. So black to red, do not tone out, that's good. And then I wanna make sure that my black goes to the shield on my coax which it does, so that's my ground. And then there's a ground lug over here on the chassis. And that connects up just fine. And then I wanna make sure that my positive lead does not connect to the ground on the coax shield, and it does not connect to the chassis ground. So we are good to go. So chassis ground, no chassis ground. Aces. So that takes care of that. Now we can button the whole thing back up again. All right, we have the Yaesu FT891 and I have my benchtop power pole connections. Let's get them connected. All right, we heard the clicks. Look at that, 13.6 volts connected up, ready to roll. So you can find this out on Thingiverse by creator Wang G. You can print this in any color you want. I think black is a fantastic color for this. Designed to fit like it came from the factory. Don't forget to put the notch through the frame of the radio as shown in the video earlier. This mod may void your warranty, modify at your own risk. Jason will make these a kit for you, or you can make one all by yourself. And he's got the printer settings and the SDL downloads ready to roll. Power pole the world. That's what everybody says these days. A couple of radio manufacturers have done power poles in their radio chassis. Yesu is not one of them. Now we fixed that problem with Jason's help. And there's a couple of other ones out there. This is the one that Jason Wang N0B0 this is the one that Jason Wang, N0BOY, did. Links for this will be in the description down below where you can find this on Thingiverse or where you can order a kit like the one that I had that was somewhat pre-assembled for you. Installation is not difficult at all. You'll spend some time fiddling, getting the power poles through the chassis of the radio. And once it's done, it's done and it works. And that's what I like about things like this. I like things that work. It's refreshing to find something that works in this day and age. I love it. So I got one more of these left. We're gonna do a giveaway. Leave a comment in the description down below with my catchphrase of thanks for being awesome. And on Halloween, we will draw this out of the random comment picker. So you have a chance to get one of these for your Yezu FT891 and get it installed yourself. This will be the kit where you have to do some crimping and soldering as you desire and get it all ready. Like he says in the description, this is at your own risk, but it looks like it's a lot of fun and something that is relatively straightforward to do. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.